Yes, we have another talk, the last talk of the session, one that looks very interesting. It's about a formalization of forcing in set theory. Well, thank you very much. Good afternoon. This is a joint work with Emmanuel Gunter and Miguel Pagano from the National University at Cordoba. I will start by reviewing a, a bit of Isabel Seref, which is a which is not that much used in comparison, obviously, with Hall. Then I will discuss the countable transitive approach to forcing and a, a brief comparison to others' approaches. Then uh, the benefits of this countable transitive approach should be apparent when we compare uh, the, the informal math we are formalizing with our code. And then I will discuss some further directions in a, in a more research. So why did we choose Isabel Zeref? Uh, when we started around 2017, it had the, the greatest part of set theory formalized, and that would be the, the theory of relativization and absoluteness that are prerequisites for the theory of forcing. And we learned using the Isar language, which is very nice to, to have <clears throat> natural proofs and proof documents in, in, in contrast to procedural, pro procedural or apply style proofs. And it's, it, as, it doesn't assume too much. So it is comparatively low in consistency strength with other approaches. I, I will discuss this in a moment. And there are some downsides of this choice. Uh, although we have access to the simplifier and a marvelous tool like Auto, uh, Sledgehammer is missing from Isabel Seref. And uh, Isabel Seref is internally untyped. Uh, and that, that gives us some extra burdens of proof. Also, uh, it's meta theory pure, it's rather weak, and it doesn't accommodate uh, inductive uh, definitions. Well, uh, what is Isabel Seref? So it, it is an object logic defined on top of pure. It defines two types, I for sets and O for Booleans. And the axioms of set theory are written in as terms of type O, and some of them are not strictly first order, uh, because, for instance, the replacement and separation axioms uh, have include some higher order variables, um, and so so it, it it's kind of more similar to von Neumann and Gödel Vernet's uh, theory that to Sarmero Frankel uh, first order theory. Uh, this has an impact in our design decisions. And it is also to be noted that the, the, the two types I and O are not defined inductively. So induction and recursion is, is built internal, internally to the theory. So once we have a theorem of well-foundedness, say of the naturals or the ordinals, one can one can do one, one can do induction and recursion. So, okay. So I will spend uh, four slides uh, discussing the the CTM approach to forcing. Uh, so a countable transitive model of ZF is a. Um, is a first order structure. So we have a family of sets and we have a, a binary relation. And this first order structure is satisfied the, the Sermel Frankel uh, axioms. And we assume, moreover, that M is a standard model. So uh, the, the binary relation is actually the membership relation uh, restricted to, to the family of sets M. And the family of sets M is uh, countable and transitive. So uh, elements of elements of M are in M. 
Uh, and this has, this uh, the existence of a countable transitive model is a running assumption of our development. And it follows from the existence of a well-founded model. So a first order model will, when the relation is well-founded. Since the model is a standard, it makes sense to compare for each, for, for, for two elements, for instance, the uh, notions, uh, the real notion, for instance, here, inclusion, the, the relation of inclusion, and the same relation as seen from within the model. Yeah, and the, the right hand side here can be written as a term of type O as a formula. So we have, uh, this is the, the same definition as the subset relation, but with the quantification restricted to M. We call this term the relativization of the inclusion to the model M. In this particular case of the inclusion relation, the relation is absolute. That means that the deciding if, as, and for two elements in the model M, one is included in the other, if and only if the model be, believes that one is included in the other. And this happens, we say that the, 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 this relation is absolute for transitive models. And this is one of the main reasons why we are using transitive models. Well, so we fix some uh, countable transitive model M, we call that the ground model, and we also fix a, a pre-order with top that belongs to M. And we call that, the, the, no, the, the, the name for that is a, a forcing notion. I want to be defining here uh, what uh, an M generic filter is, yeah, it's, it's not a difficult definition, but I won't spend time on that. So, but if I have a filter, an, an M generic filter that is uh, inside of P, I can adjoin it to the ground model to obtain an extension. And we call that an extension, a generic extension. Every element of the generic extension is coded by some element uh, of the ground model through a function called val. And uh, the fundamental theorems of, of forcing say that also truth in the generic extension is coded by a function, uh, by, by, by a function called forces. This is a formula transformer. So the, the main result by, by Cohen in 1963 was that there is such a function, a formula transformer, that such that for every formula and every M generic filter G and an element uh, in the ground model, uh, we have this equivalence. I, I'm stating here for, for just for a formula with one just free, free variable, but you can do it in general. So that M of G satisfies phi using this parameter. It's equivalent to the existence of a witness P in the, in the generic filter such that M with this extended environment satisfy forces of phi. Actually, this uh, is equivalent to what you might have seen in texts uh, as the forcing relation without, usually without the decorations here, M, P, and, and, and the, the, the order relation. Okay, so what are the reasons to using, for using uh, CTMs? First of all, uh, accountability ensures that generic objects exist so when one is studying forcing and we say I have the universe of set and I bring, bring uh, some generic new element of the universe out of thin air, it's kind of mysterious, but using countability, you can get a grasp on, on, on a generic. And so there is no mystery there. Uh, and also transitivity 
brings absoluteness into account and for instance saying that an element is an ordinal it's the same in the universe of sets i or a zine from within the, the ground model or any of its generic extensions uh, in this case both m and m of g are standard first order two valued models so and those are closer to our intuition this, in, this is in contrast with other approaches like the Boolean valued model approach. And also CTMs are used in an important fraction of the literature for, for the, the previous reasons. Uh, finally, if one chooses uh, the, the pre-order, the forcing notion appropriately, one can obtain uh, the, 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 the failure or, or or, or uh, first order properties that, that are satisfied in the generic extension for an arbitrary generic G. So the, this is the other main theorem by, by, by Cohen when he proved that the, the negation of the continuum hypothesis was consistent with the axioms of the set theory. And uh, by, uh, cho by choosing a, a particular partial order it's the, the the set of partial binary functions i mean with zero one valued functions with <clears throat> domain included in the m's version of the second uncountable cardinal then m of g satisfies the, the negation of the continuum hypothesis so this is one of the the main goals of our long-term project to formalize the independence of CH using the CTM approach. Uh, and uh, we were, we thought we were alone on this and suddenly uh, we learned about Lean and uh, the Lean community, especially specifically Jesse Michael Han and Floris Van Dor formalized uh, the independence of CH fully but using the Boolean valued approach to forcing. Uh, so this is a, a, main, a main point here. And I will say a little word about uh, other approaches to set theory. For instance, in Hall, uh, we have Hall set F by Obua and set of C in Hall by Paulson. Those two are logically equivalent uh, formulations and implement set of uh, set theory inside whole so you can take advantage of all the type theoretical infrastructure of whole but there is a word on how much are you assuming here and this is the we can tell about this using con the language of consistency strength so use the assumption of isabel set f plus the existence of uh, CTM is directly and consistency wise um, less powerful than the assumption of the consistency of set F plus the existence uh, of one inaccessible cardinal. Both whole set F and ZFC in whole are approximately equal in consistency strength to set F plus one inaccessible and the calculus of inductive constructions on which lean is based requires uh, the consistency of set F plus uh, infinitely many inaccessibles. Uh, it, it should be noted that none of those of the three frameworks uh, will, will ensure, will provide finitary consistency proofs of, of, the, of the relative consistency of set FC plus CH. So what did, did we do here? So we took the constructability library by Paulson and uh, enhanced several results there. And this is already <coughs> in Isabel's 2020 distribution. We formalized forces, the formula transformer, also the, and, and from this, the forcing relation and proved the fundamental theorems of forcing. Uh, we showed that generic extensions of models of set F all, are also models of set F and respectively adding the axiom of choice. Um, finally, we gave an example of a proper extension. So um, uh, 
uh, the forcing the most basic forcing notion that that has that adds a co one coin real and that gives us a, a, a non-trivial extension okay so for the first item uh, i i will say brief words about constructability lib library so it, this contains a major development development of relativization and absoluteness but for class models so collections of sets, perhaps too big to be sets. And the, the goal of this was to formalize Gödel constructible universe. And in order to do this, since the constructible universe has a, <clears throat> a, def a model theoretic definition, this required the definition of, uh, of a, the set of internal formulas and model theoretic satisfaction. Also, in order to obtain formulas to, to, to work model theoretically, um, we need to, it, it was needed to follow this discipline. Uh, it's, assume you, you have a, a term of type I, and for instance, the unordered pair. So you can write this, you can obtain the relativization uh, as, uh, as it was done for the subset relation before. And you need to write this in a fully relational format. I mean, uh, the, the, the language of sermillo frankel set theory, it's only, it only has a, uh, the membership relation as a non-logical symbol. So there are no uh, functions. And so therefore, no, there is no function application. And so you have to write it com in a complete re relational format, this. From this, from, from the, the fully relational format, uh, uh, you can synthesize a member of the set of internal formulas. In this particular case, we um, enhance around 40 absoluteness and lemmas, and some of them just use the, the assumption of the class being transitive and non-empty. Uh, this, the formalization of the formula transformer forces is the most difficult part of the development uh, since forces is defined by recursion of formulas. And in particular, when you write the, write down the, 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 the definition of, of forces, the, the base cases, those are the most difficult ones because those are written in terms of uh, something like transfinite induction on the elements of such x and y. But you say, well, we are doing, we're performing some operation on formulas, so discrete objects. So what, what, what does it mean to, to, to do transfinite induction inside this x and this y? Well, actually, the solution to this riddle is to talk about this recursion using internal formulas. So you have to describe the recursion, the recursion for the base cases using internalized well-founded recursion. Luckily, this was already done um, for the, this internalization was already done by Paulson, but uh, we had to tweak it a little bit. So we enhanced some recursion results of set F and uh, some preservation results in constructibles and uh, that were, were needed to show that forcing is absolute for absolute uh, atomic formulas. Finally, uh, we showed that uh, extensions of CTMs of ZF are also uh, models of ZF and respect respectively adding the axiom of choice Actually, the, the, the axiom of choice is only needed to be assumed in the original model to obtain the same conclusion in the extension, but it is not part of the, of the meta theory. We, we do not assume uh, AC uh, in the de development of the forcing. And some of uh, the axioms of set FC can be proved in the generic extension without using the, the machinery of forcing. Um, 
some of those uh, do need it, like uh, separation, replacement, and power set. For the first two, uh, we, uh, this is the point where we needed uh, legitimate first order expressions for the axioms of, of uh, separation and replacement in order to apply the, fa the formula transformer forces. And um, and some part of this part, uh, part of this work, we we were able to do it before writing down the definition of forces. Um, uh, thanks to the modularity of, of the theory, and we wish we want to compare a, a little bit of the code we obtain with the actual informal math from the textbook by Kunan. So uh, you you can see here the above an excerpt of the of the relevant proof. This is of the power set axiom, and we will compare it uh, briefly. So it says that it is enough, assuming that A belongs into the extension, then there is a B in the extension such that uh, the, the inclusion holds. So you will, you will notice the, the similarity in, in the notation. So I, I think this is very nice. And so to, to start, we assume uh, we, we, we fix some, some element of, of M, which serves as, as a name for A. <clears throat> you can see here, uh, this is the notation, the sub, subscript notation is for the value of, of tau at the generic G. And we have Q defined like this. We, we already proved that the relativization of of this expression is exactly this intersection. So we have lemmas here. And then there's, uh, here there are many folded lines. Anytime we have to show that something is in M, we have to follow the relativization and synthesis discipline that I mentioned before in order to, uh, to obtain the membership in M. And, and this is the part that, that needs more care right now, and we are working in, on, on automatizing this. So then we have pi here, as if we have b as the value of pi, and we will be done if for any c here, we show that c belongs in b. And this is the same, and you will, you will note that it's, it's right similar here. And this is not exactly the same, but uh, one member of the team realized that with a two line patch, you can obtain a, a similar, uh, more similar description. You see here the, 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 the internalized, the format of the internalized uh, formula with its De Bruyne indices zero and one and the parameters are sigma and chi. Everything else is exactly the same, and so this is this is enough for a, for a sample. Uh, okay, so the next steps are twofold. There are many. There are some results, combinatorial results that must be uh, formalized and transferred into the ground model. But the point is that those results are not absolute. And we need some, um, for this, we, we are developing some technical aids, in particular, the uh, relativization, uh, automation, uh, the automation of the relativization and the, the synthesis discipline. And we're actually working with the fully relational format is unwieldy for non-absolute concepts. So we are adding, uh, an important, a new, important but technical step to the the discipline that is working with relative functions as it works in textbooks, and so we we introduce some function here, like for the relative, uh, a function of type i to i uh, as the power set relative to m, and the same with cardinals and covenal and covenalities. And uh, well, that that is all. Thank you very much. Okay, that is terrific. Um, sorry, let's just. Okay, 
So let's see, are there questions? Let me have a look. Um, Simon, you still have your hand up. Do you have a question this time around? No. Um, so are there no questions? I certainly, well, first, I think I would like to make some remarks because, you know, that is amazing work. Um, just the technical complexity of doing that. How far do you think you are away from um, proving the consistency of the negation of the continuum hypothesis? Uh, I would say, hmm. Yeah, um, I would say less than one year. So given, given the rate we, we have uh, on, on some, some thousands line of, lines of code, but I, the, the work we are doing right now is, is kind of, it's all uh, focused into try to accelerate in the process. So we, we realized that we were doing some things uh, in a really slow manner, I mean, by hand. Yes. And now, now we, are, we are working, we just got into NM, into ML really deeply into to getting things quicker. And we are advancing with that, but it would take so. I, I, I'm not sure if we can have it before May. I recall that absoluteness proofs could be tedious and it's frustrating because conceptually most of them are trivial, but it's, they do need automation. Yes, uh, actually, but actually the, the, the main problem is non-absoluteness. Because once you have absoluteness, you can uh, uh, disregard the relative uh, concept and work in, in, in the, yes, the type of, of sets and, and, and everything is, is smooth. The problem is that when you do not have that anymore and, and you do not have a, a, a neat expression, for instance, the relative, uh, the, the, the relative version of power set is simply the original power set intersect the, the, the model. But for, uh, for cardinals, you do not have anything like that. No, of course. So the, the, strategy, the strategy here uh, now is to obtain the same results in the same shape you, you have in, in Isabel ZF uh, code base. Uh, and in that way, you can feed the, the automatic tools like BLAST and, and, and AUTO with the same theorems and you will have the same power, but now using the, 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 the relative versions. That's our strategy now. And uh, we are advancing pretty well with that. I see. Yes, now the other thing is the consistency strength. So the calculus of inductive constructions is a, inherently, I think you're saying, approximately equivalent to omega many inaccessible cardinals? Yes. Yeah, interesting how that comes out. I mean, semantics is a bit off. Um, yes, my own grasp of these things, especially in the case of Isabel ZF and then these things built on higher order logic uh, are not so clear, but uh, it's useful to see your you like the way you've listed the consistency strength there. It's not, of course, that anyone would imagine any of these to be inconsistent. I'm sorry, the last part it's I didn't not get. not that any of these formal systems are making extreme assumptions that one wouldn't actually believe. So even no. what's the mega many inaccessibles is not really a big assumption these days. No, 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 but, but, uh... But the, 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 the thing is that you are, um, if I said to, to, to say that I, well, let me say it in another way. We are showing with this, this development, a machine that takes a model and gives you another model. So it's a model theoretic approach. From that, going to the, the, the thing that ZFC doesn't prove uh, CH in first order logic. I, I do not think it's a real, real gain because 
it, it is a real gain when you know that you are not assuming anything, just just the mechanics of first order reasoning. And, and, and yeah. that's a finitary. And, and so yeah. any any of this, uh, none of these approaches will, will give you the, the finitary um, certainty of, of the relative consistency. Yes, um, I'd love to talk more, but I think we've run out of time for this session. So I'd like to thank all the speakers.